What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 468 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. It's Brackets Day. It should be a national holiday. I can't believe kids have to go to Bracket. school on Brackets <laughs> Day. But here we are. Um, to my right is Stephen Kyle Bracky, And I can hear and I can see Ben Askren. Ben, yes. how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good this morning. Uh, we got high school kids back at AWA. Um, everything's just moving forward in, in a really positive direction. Okay, wow. Great news out of AWA. Fantastic. Wisconsin. But I will tell you, can I tell you one stupid thing I did, Christian? Love those. Okay, so you know what I did tonight? I have my daughters and girls got to seven years old, and they, you know they try to do like different things. I agreed to host the, the Girl Scout troop in a little wrestling thing to show them all about wrestling, and it's oh. while the brackets are coming out. <gasps> oh boy, <laughs> I didn't. It. I knew you said stupid. I didn't think that's moronic. That is just <laughs> that's wrestling fan malpractice, Ben. You're I actually did it two months ago. I didn't think about it. Oh, I know. Man. Who would have oh. thought? That's funny. Seriously. Well, um, well, well. Lucky for you, you'll be able to get caught up quickly on all the crazy matches, and the, we'll have the full breakdown live in real yeah. time tonight, five central, six eastern. I don't know. I was uh, I was looking back at our coverage page from Instant Blaze last year, and um, <laughs> we did an article called uh, "Where These Seeds Went So Wrong." Or something like it's that. It's kind of like <laughs> an annual tradition, but last year was among the worst years. Every year, it's so, like 2014 or 15. One of those was the absolute worst. And then it got had a couple of years it was like not so bad. And then last year was really bad. The 57 yeah. I, stuff. I feel like you guys had a year where you were really like, this is great. They did a good job. I don't remember which year it was. Maybe 18 or 17. But yeah, last year, I remember you upset. Um, so, okay, so let's, let, me, let me interview you guys right now. Okay. If you had to pick one person that they're going to mess up really bad tonight, and it could be positive or negative, but they're going to mess them up, who are they going to mess up? Mm, man, I haven't thought about this. Um, Ooh. I think 33 could be a real disaster. Rivera at 13-2, at and two, right? Is that his record? That's tough to make him the one. I think something with Chaz Tucker. Chaz Tucker could be very involved. But you know what, Ben? The thing about these, you just never see them coming. You always think you know sure. how it's going to go, and then it's like Alec Pantelio beats Ryan Deacon like how many times during the year and is seated behind him, including a win at Big Ten. So you never really – I mean, there were some catastrophes at heavyweight last year. I can't remember. I think Desi and Jennings were involved. It was um, – yeah. Mason Paris was a very high seed. Oh, yeah, Ooh, Mason yeah. got a huge seed. I think they just saw this yeah. coming. Maybe they're yeah, they were ahead of the times. They were way, they were way ahead. So, I don't know. I think something with 33 could definitely get crazy with Chaz Tucker. Undefeated. Yeah. Undefeated Chaz Tucker. Also, at well, 65, you have another situation with Shane Griffith being um, yeah. unbeaten on the year. Oh, my God. What if they put him at one and they put Marinelli Chenzo at two, three? They're, there's oh, no, my I feel God. Like there's no way that they would be enough points apart that they couldn't argue and fix that. So, like, the Matrix yeah, yeah. could spit him out as number one in Marinelli, too, but I think they would be able to say, no, no way. I believe in Nomad's um, article, he actually had Marinelli and Joseph ahead of Griffith in the Matrix. Oh, really? Hmm. We're, we're all living in okay. the Matrix. And it really drops off because those are the pretty clear top three at 165. So, actually, yeah. two Stanford guys could be real CD. Yeah, Real Woods, yeah. that's right. Because Real Woods, as we mentioned, only one loss on the year. But Where do you be, guys think Real should be at again? Well, I just think looking at that weight, nine is like – I think he should be ahead of someone like Demas and maybe even Moran who he has bad losses at least. But at the same time, Real Woods' best wins are not yeah. not even close to the level of Dom's or Tristan Moran. So at the same time, he may be right perfectly placed at nine because as soon as I got off radio, I went and um, – Got on space case and he kind of he kind of sold me that he maybe should be the guy. <laughs> I'm man enough. I'm uh, man enough to. Admit you guys, it. you guys should. Um, you know, when something like that happens, when you see piles steaming across the the flow wrestling floor, you guys should get crack a camera out and just you know, <laughs> crack, you know, sneak attack with the camera and w yeah. watch them fight. Yeah, I'm a lot calmer funny. than I used to be, but it's still pretty pretty entertaining. Um, um, yeah, I was on the ESPN call yesterday and they. So there was a person on the call, we'll mention his name, 
who was uh, pretty convinced that Real Woods was going to be the three. And I just thought, there's no way. But then maybe it's like maybe other people feel like that. Oh, my gosh. Let me pull this season up. Um, I, I didn't feel like – yeah, I mean, looking at we, – we, we looked at his wrestle stats. I didn't feel like he could go that, that high. I mean, basically, if you just really like good records. Um, he beat Sedarian Perry. He beat Sal Profasi. G Feller, who's not even in the mix. Who wrestled like four started, matches yep. all year. It, Dusty, That's kind of his best win. Dusty Hone. His best win is like of a of qualifiers is Dusty Hone, I think. Yeah. Get out of here. If he's <laughs> yeah. three, I, I, if he's three, cancel that seating. Committee. If he's three, we riot. We riot. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> we we storm the streets of Minnesota, technically Indianapolis. How about they, like. There's coaches. They go from straight from their conference tournament to Indianapolis. Yeah, that sounds Monday, awful. Monday, Tuesday. They do? Yeah. The ones that are on, like, the committee. Do we know the committee? Dude. Nomad always had that memorized. Yeah, I'm not Nomad. Yeah, I know. Maybe he's – sometimes he listens. Sometimes he'd be listening, and he just – he'll send it to us. Uh, okay. Now, yeah. let's uh, – B- Bracky has a story. So there's oh, some shena- let's do so, it. You know we don't they uh, we don't get to stream Big Twelves anymore, so we're kind of like we're not there, and so we're just kind of finding stuff out secondhand. And there's some shenanigans, and Bracky's got to tell us all about it. It's honestly pretty um, some unbelievable stuff, and I'm excited to tell Ben for the first time and see his reaction. Um, so let me set the stage here. Before the tournament, <laughs> the um, the coaches have a meeting. Obviously, to, to kind of go over final seeds and everything. And they agree that they'll wrestle true fourth and true sixth place matches because some of the weights okay. came down to four and, and six uh, automatic qualifiers. But they yep. determine also that they will not wrestle true eighth place matches. I believe there's only one one weight that it came down to that and that – or that had that many allocations, and that was 133 that had eight. Okay. Okay. Um, so the tournament, all the coaches, he's like, everyone everyone understand that. This was Bob Berta. Here, let me look at his official title. Uh, he is a senior associate commissioner of communications for the Big 12, but he was on site and the man in charge. He said, everyone Wait, go can, with can that. I start, can I ask a question? Who, is this second information or Bracky? Were you there like, you, and you heard this? I was not there. This is as good Who as are we? we're talking to coaches. This is from someone in the room. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, so everyone says we're good. So tournament begins. Taylor Lamont, the number one seed, goes 0 and 2. Oh he does oh, not yeah, finish top he does not finish top eight. The other uh, one more thing. The other thing they said they would do is they would wrestle to ninth place at that weight to determine who would be the first oh. uh, alternate should something happen to one of the eight automatic qualifiers. And they did this at Big Tens, and I know they did this at other weights in the Big 12 to the yep. next yep. to the next spot. Anyways, Taylor Lamont loses first round to Moses Schwartz, drops down, loses to Reese Whitcraft. He is out of the tournament. Uh, yep. Lucas Siebert of West Virginia – Lost to Moses Schwartz first round, but then he drops down and beats Van Vliet, Van Vliet of Air Force, who he'd been yeah. majored by earlier this season. So that win puts him in the top eight. Okay. Now, West Virginia confirms literally every single coach on that coaching staff. So we're talking Tim Flynn, Cliff Moore, Mitchell Port. Cody. And Cody mm-hmm. Walters all separately confirmed with Bob Berta there would be no true eighth place matches. Like, they're like, we are in, right? We are in. There, there will be no match wrestled. He says yes every single time. And so, Seibert finishes off the tournament. He finishes in eighth place. He yep. lost to Skolarczyk and then Whitcraft to take eighth. But they take eight at that weight. So he's in. Uh-oh. So s- Sunday morning, um, when they wrestle the eighth place match, it ends, and then the way they do the Big Twelve tournament is just the first and second place matches are in the evening. Okay. So he he's done. He goes out to dinner to start celebrating with his parents. He's an NCAA qualifier, and uh, the 
West Virginia contingency is getting ready to leave the arena, and it, uh, they're almost done with the morning session, and a table worker comes up to him and is like, hey, you, where's your guy at? And they're like, what are you talking about? What, what guy? And they're like, uh, Cyber, he's got, a, he's got a true eighth place match. And they're like, the heck he does. No, we agreed, no eighth place, true eighth place matches. So they go try to find Bob Berta, and apparently Utah Valley had come to him and was like, yo, we need this true eighth place match. Like, we always do them. We have to do it. So then, so how did, but did they get, did they reconvene all the coaches? Well, so yeah, they keep arguing and Flynn is like, we need to have a vote on this. This is not right. You said before we started the tournament, no true eighth. And then confirmed to us multiple times throughout the tournament, no true eighth, your kids in. And so they convene all the coaches and they have a vote and they split five, five. But well, why do they even need to have a vote if it was yes, already decided on? I wouldn't even that's, offer the vote if I were Flynn. I just said my yeah, kid's not wrestling. I, would not. Well, I think they were telling him like your kid yeah. either shows up or Lamont gets a spot. Man. That, that's pretty. That feels like pretty low integrity. And you know, I mean, obviously, if we know that's true out of Bob Berta and the rest of the Big Twelve coaches, they gotta feel pretty shitty about that. You know, agreeing to one thing and then backing out on it when it didn't go the way they thought it was gonna go. Man. But that reminds me a lot of. Um, I, I was actually thinking about this yesterday when I was looking at the at large, the wild card selections. And, you know, there's no one who's, like, uh, I actually looked at Spay's list of who got left out. And there's no one that's – I think the highest-ranked guy was 22, maybe. There was no one, like, crazy mm -hmm. high that got left out. It reminds me of the old uh, – I, I wish there was, like, video of this, but obviously there's not. After the Big 12 tournament, there's 37, 36, 37 al allocations, right? We're talking back in the day, in my era. And so I'm at the top three. And after the top three – the other 20 guys, there's only five teams, right? There's only 50 guys. The other the other 20, they got voted on. And these meetings would be like war zones. And and some of the things you heard come, come out of them, you know, was coaches all trying to screw each other. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew if they could get three votes for their guy. So, hey, you and you vote for me, and then we'll vote for him. And, you know, and we'll, we'll make sure this guy doesn't get on. And so that sounds a lot like what this what must have happened in this meeting, you know, or you, know, you, you, you must have got in somebody's ear – about um about you know helping them or helping their case so i'm not this, i'm not even finished with the craziness yet so oh i'm sorry no no you're good it's okay um so anyways five five and so berta is the deciding vote he votes in favor of having the true eighth place match west virginia has to call seabert and be like yo what are, where are you at like what are you doing Jeez. He's eating sushi. He's out eating sushi, <laughs> celebrating with his family after finishing in the top eight, doing what he was supposed to do to qualify for the NCAA championships. And they have to c tell him to come back and wrestle this match. Wow. Against Taylor Lamont. Yeah, and they just throw the match in like a half hour before they started the finals. Um, and he, he loses to Taylor Lamont. And I guess the crazy thing to me is Taylor Lamont was going to get an automatic qualifier oh, bid. Yeah. And easily. that was the big point of contention in the meeting. It was like, what are we doing here, guys? This kid's going to get an automatic bid. This kid earned it here at the tournament. That gets another kid from the Big 12 in the national tournament. And we're going to take that away after the kid did what he was supposed to do and Taylor Lamont went 0-2? Yeah. Yeah. He's 17-7 and on the year. And – he has wins over NCAA qualifiers Devin Turner, Jack Skolarczyk, Montori Bridges, Cam Sikora, Moses Schwartz, and Todd Small. And all seven losses are to fellow NCAA qualifiers. He's getting in. He would have gotten in easily. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's interesting. It sounded like it was like the affiliate members versus voting with Utah Valley and the, the actual members like Oklahoma State. Like I know, I know for sure Oklahoma State and Iowa State – like, John Smith had the same argument I did. Like, this helps the Big 12. What are we doing? And then um, – But regardless but regardless of whether it helps or not, that that, is, that argument does not hold any weight to me. It's If you guys sat down as a group of men and you agreed on something, have some yeah. effing integrity. Have some integrity. If we said we're going to do this, we're going to do it. We yeah. all agreed to it. And now because someone's got their feelings hurt because it didn't work out the way they wanted to work out, you're going to turn it. That, that, that's low integrity. That spineless kind of crap right there, if that's what really happened. And, you know, the idea that, well, we had done it like this in the past, well, then that's an issue you have to raise when they're saying we're not going to do it this year, right? They're saying, yes. well, we've done it like this yes. every year. Okay, 
Well, if that's an issue, then it's an issue then, right? Yep, but you're not thinking about yeah. that because you have the one seed and you're you have Taylor Lamont and you're like, whatever, it's not going to come down to a true eighth. But sometimes it does, and maybe you need to access the deep re- recesses of your mind and make those points then because it should be a speak now or forever hold your peace. You can't just make you, – you can't make changes to conference tournaments mid-tournament to the actual structure yeah. of them when kids are out eating yeah. sushi celebrating. It's just – not a way. It's very amateurish, actually, and something yeah. beneath what you would expect to happen at a uh, conference as prestigious as the Big Twelve, one of the most, uh, you know, one of the most iconic conferences in in all sports. Right? You shouldn't have something yeah. like that go on. So bad leadership, bad voting. I think I think the coaches that voted with Utah Valley, um, I I don't think they should have done that. I think that was that was a a, a bad move and. Yeah, I yeah. disagree with it. I well, I mean, I, I would say it comes down to Bob Berta the most out of anyone. Sure. I, I don't know this gentleman at all, but he should have said when they had the second meeting, he should have said, "Listen, guys, I'm in charge. We already voted on this. Match, yeah. match ain't happening. Sorry, go yeah. away." Exactly. I mean, that's simple as that. Yep. Okay. So that was crazy. Maybe next time, next time they got to put it in, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they do. It. It, it seems like some. Like this always happens in wrestling. Like, can you imagine this basketball. happening in another sport? Yeah, like in basketball, the conference champ gets in the tournament. What if they were like, ah, well, the conference champ, you weren't the best team in the conference, so you're not in. We'll do gonna take this other team. Yeah, totally crazy. Uh, so unfortunate yeah. that that happened, but uh, it'd be like that sometimes. All right, now we so, got some. Can, Go I, ahead. <laughs> can I tell you my, my favorite story from? the uh the you know the closed meetings that yeah. I, I wasn't in their rumor right but they, they it was like a war zone apparently you know everyone going after everyone so the one year um mark manning and john uh john smith particularly are arguing over a uh, particular two people they're down two people right and what i believe it was the year that bj wright was ranked number seven in the country and got left out as insane as that may sound wow um but <laughs> Mark was going to John, and, and and John got up and said, Mark, you talk to me like to get, I'm going to come over there and punch you in your mouth. <laughs> and then two minutes, oh two minutes later, they voted on it, and Mark, man, this guy got left out, and he started, my guy's not going, and he started slamming the table like this repeatedly, and then but all the coaches just left, and he was he was furious. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Man, that does sound horrible. What a it bad sounds way. like so much fun. Oh, it yeah. sounds like so much fun also. I wish we could <laughs> okay. imagine having television now, of that. Think about this, Christian. Jack Spates, Brian Smith, Mark Manning, John Smith, Bobby Douglas, Battle Royale. Five guys <laughs> going at it. That sounds so awesome. Thunderdome style. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm sorry we missed that. Uh, so, wait, the conference seriously. was voting – the conference votes on their qualifiers? So you would have there. It was so Big Twelve was always at the maximum, I think, which was seventy two percent or something. So we would have, I, I believe, it was thirty six, right? So in the Big Twelve every year we get thirty six, which is the maximum. Everyone else would fluctuate slightly based on how good their team had done. I, I think it was based on the past three to five years or something like that. Yeah. So it was the 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 way it was written was the top three all got in. After that, they voted on it. Man. So you had six spots between twenty guys. The craziest guy not qualifying I remember is Craig Henning when in like 2008 yeah. or 9. That was like mind-blowing. He was like the national finalist the year before. He almost won that match and then mm-hmm. proceeded to not qualify. He did not have a great year, but it was still mind-blowing when he was left home. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. I can't believe – it's so funny that that was ever thought of as a good way to choose your qualifiers. It's like, why don't we look at what happened in the years prior and use that – like it never dawned on them Weird. to use it never dawned on them to use the data from the year that was happening with the wrestlers that were involved. They're like, well, yeah. you know, um, Teague Moore, you know, four years ago he won, so I think Oklahoma, we should have another qualifier at twenty five. Yeah, like that. What with, with, with the Craig Henning one? I think I think their hands were tied because I believe. I think the I think the maximum was seven seventy two percent, and so the Big Ten had seventy two. And so they would take the top seven plus two. And Craig Hang didn't take top eight, so I don't even think they could pick him. Oh, okay. 
So you had to. You, know you could saying? you could never like do the the Evan Wick and just forfeit out and then get in in the previous scenario. I I don't think so. Man, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. Some so there is something There's, to be said for like doing the conference tournament, right, and participating in it. Yeah. I I think you know the idea of just stepping on and taking the one second, you know, with with Wick this time, and we saw Brent Moore did it. Uh, or Mitch Moore did it this year. And, you know, the most famous one is Soriano. And you hope <clears throat> you hope these guys come back and do well. But Soriano just ended up taking a spot from someone. It was never going to wrestle. It was literally just a thing to hurt Oklahoma State. Um, you know, I think that you almost should have to show some level of competence at the conference tournament. I wouldn't mind if they yeah. got rid of that altogether. Even though I don't like the – on the one hand, I don't like the idea of a really good season being nullified by, uh, you know, one bad tournament. Uh, on the other hand, you should so- show some level of competitiveness to to get into NCAs. So I could kind of yeah. go either ways. Okay. Um, in coronavirus updates, the Ohio State tournament is having like limited viewing for their uh state wrestling tournament it sounds like yeah so that's not good like they're anyone that bought tickets you get it refunded and then the wrestler and coach gets to pick their like four two or four four people yeah wrestlers get four coaches get two and you have to pick your your favorite uh people in the world what that's it that's how they're doing it yes can you imagine the fifth person, Grandma, <laughs> guilting you, Christian? Granny ain't coming. Can you imagine? Your granny ain't coming, and she's going to put the guilt trip on you for the next 20 years? Hopefully she's got 20. Oh, my God. That would, that would be terrible. I know. Can you imagine those decisions? All right, who are your four, Ben? Oh. You got four tickets. Who's getting them? Uh, let's see. Well, my um, is, is my brother wrestling, or is he he's out? He's, he's out. Okay, because um... – and this is a wrestling event, I'm assuming. Yeah, we'll say it's wrestling. He's he's still in uh, high school right now. Can, can can I count him as a coach? Or uh, I already my coach is already picked. You literally have to fire Brian Smith, but yeah, you can. Okay, Brian Smith's there. Right, okay, I'm at Missouri. <laughs> um, so like my freshman year of college, probably my mom, my dad. Well, okay. my wife's not there yet because I ha- I have not met her. Okay. So my wife, my Amy, dad, my you're brother. Out. I'm sorry. Matt. Amy's out. My wife, my dad, my brother, and probably my high school coach. That would probably be my four. Okay. Coach uh, Messenbrink. Yeah. All right. There it yep. is. That's the big yeah, four. I think so. Someone said Who's your four? fifth favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you have Amy, for- ver- Amy versus Granny for the for the fourth spot. <laughs> or start, start selling the spots. Like, you guys can come. Just, you know, what's your bid? <laughs> yeah. Mine's easy because it would be my, my two brothers and my parents. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Someone said you got to bring wow. Graham Graham. Might be her last go around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Graham hey, Graham. Now, now that I'm thinking about the Ohio State tournament, I'm headed to the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic this weekend, which is live on Flow. Yeah, baby. Did, did Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic do it that weekend because they were scared of having Ohio guys come over and wrestle in it? <laughs> I doubt that. I'm sure it was Ooh, just when they, they could get the arena. Well, it's all, no, it's always the week before NCAAs. No, it's not. Sometimes, they have, it's, sometimes after. it's after. Sometimes yeah. it's after, but it's never during. Yeah. I don't know. They haven't won a whole bunch of times in a row and not letting Ohio guys in would probably help their case. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's what's going on. The Ohio kids okay, are welcome to skip their state tournament and attend the Pittsburgh wrestling well, What Ohio kid would be in it this year? I'm, I genuinely don't know. I'm, at, I'm asking. I, I don't even know. Ohio's just usually really good, so I got to yeah. assume there's a couple at least. This is a, definitely yeah. a down year for – for PA, they're still really good, but it's not as it's not what it was. We need Ohio. Rangers. Well, they Br- Bracky mentioned this that they're they're pulling in non Pennsylvania kids, you know the the SEM kids, and I find it hilarious that that it's a Pennsylvania team and they list their hometown and and for oh what's his name at one forty five really good kid Bo? McNeil oh Lachlan no McNeil they li- they list Ontario it's like whoa 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 <laughs> that's where he's from. Yeah. A Pennsylvania team. Hey, you guys, hometown listed as Ontario. You're going international for Team PA. Have they always had the Sim Kids rep- represent PA? I... No, Nomad said it had been a while. Since the Sim Kid was in it or since they represented? Since they represented PA. Yeah. Um, they've, uh, 
the, usually when they're in it, they're for Team USA. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they're trying to juice up Team PA this year. Who knows? Oh okay. my God, you guys! It makes for good matchups said, though, so yeah. I'm not I'm not complaining. Dude, make make the best matchup. Oh. That's what they should do. Holy crap, guys! Big, this, this is a big announcement. Oh, this is this is crappy. Uh, in the Facebook comments, uh, there's a comment from a Wisconsin guy. U- University of Wisconsin lacrosse is not sending team to national tournaments. They were supposed to leave tomorrow. Oh my! The Division Three national tournament. What? They're not sending the athletes. That is horrible. Seriously. What the heck? Why? Where's Nationals? Uh, Cedar Rapids. There's no cases of uh, Corona in Iowa. Well, there is in basically every state, but it's like one to five. Yeah. I was on the CDC yeah. website looking at all this BS. I think Christian's Dang, scared. that's crazy. No, so I'm not scared they, at all. I'm not scared. Wisconsin lacrosse, they had a bunch of qualifiers. They're usually a really good team. I'm not scared. I just want to see. Cases in the U.S. Here, I've got the map. Uh, Iowa has uh, eight reported cases. Wisconsin has between one and five. So, so almost outbreak Wisconsin. city. We're almost up to ten cases between the two. Look states. at that. Nothing in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, no. You can't infect us. <laughs> <laughs> Uninfectable. <laughs> that's amazing. Good. Uh, that's, that's good for them. They Alabama, have five guys going to the NCAA championships. Oh my word! Wow, that hey, sucks is that for where, those guys. Where does John go, Broughton? No, John Broughton's he's the UW Whitewater. They didn't no. do as great. Well, they they had a decent team. They had a couple really good kids, but he didn't do as great. Uh, no, and, and I don't think no, he did not, and the team did not. But we, they, they have a couple really good kids, but not as many as as lacrosse does. I don't think. Got it. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, back to the vlog, John. Oh my goodness! Dang, I can't believe UW Lacrosse is doing that. The kids just need to go on their own. Yeah, I'm just going. Stop me. That's probably that's what I would try to do. I'd show up. Just go. Yeah. What's uh? Yeah. I don't know. That sounds like it could be a legal situation. Well, that is too bad. Truly. Nomad just hit me yeah. up and said some guys at PWC. Jack Davis did it for PA in 2018. Eric Morris in 2013, and Terrence Gene Jocks in 2011. Okay. So they wrestled for Sim and then Team PA. Got it. So it has happened. It has happened. Okay. Nice. All right. Next, next topic. <clears throat> Do we want? That's to so talk- depressing. We're all de- we're all de- we all sound depressed. That depressed let's me. Back up with a good topic. Let's that sound- depressed me also. Okay. Let's go to ACCs because this was a- an exciting tournament <laughs> as we anticipate. What are you laughing at? I know what he's laughing at. This, no, this depressed me also. I can't freaking watch it. ESPN Plus keeps rejecting me over and over and over again. <laughs> Don't you have any pool at ESPN? Don't you like work there now? Oh, I, uh, uh, what's it called? No, I, I'm an uh, independent contractor. Independent contractor, which event. means no yeah. ESPN Plus for you. It's, it keeps rejecting me. I tried using BrackKey's password. It rejects that. I tried multiple <laughs> different passwords. I it was rejecting reject- them all. <laughs> Rejecting. <laughs> That's such a funny word choice. Use okay. my mom. I mean, I don't, I don't have cable. I use my mom's password. Rejected. <laughs> Frankie's password rejected. Another friend's password rejected. Come on. This is ridiculous. Bold strategy. Have you tried making your own account? No, I do. I have an ESPN Plus account. I don't have cable. You He's need a have, cable password. Yeah, for some yeah, of the stuff, ACC yeah, network. Cable. Yeah. Man, it's too bad. Yeah. It was literally the greatest 10 matches of wrestling I've ever seen, these finals. <laughs> I, I openly wept at the conclusion of each one for the beauty and the, <laughs> the excitement that they brought into my life. And so that's a shame. Oh, but, man. So 125, imagine, if you will, you know, Jacob Camacho, he's out there, his hair's kind of long, and he's on a single leg, and he finishes, <laughs> and then Mueller gets away, and he ends up on another shot, and Mueller tries to circle behind, and he comes up with a high crotch, <laughs> And catches him on his back for a uh, six-point move. And uh, tur- turns uh, – I think this might have been the biggest upset of the entire conference yeah. weekend. It, it was for me. I was. Yeah. It was like a 5-2 win for Mueller, which is not like an absolute devastation. But uh, last time they wrestled. But you know what? what's interesting is somewhat validating for, for the FRL crew is when we came – when 125, we started looking at this weight coming into the season, we're like, okay, we have a clear, like, top five or six, and that's probably when we were factoring Rivera in there. But, like, it's like, who's going to enter this Ravon Foley group? Who's someone else that can fill this 7-8 spot that we weren't really sure of? And 
the kind of clear answer to us based on like talent and just um, what we thought of the program was Camacho. And we all really liked him. We liked how he wrestled, et cetera, et cetera. And then his season starts, and immediately he extinguished those flames. He loses match yeah. number one to Killian Cardinal. He's pinned by Schwarm in 30 seconds. He got pinned by VMI's John McGarry. Don't know who that is. Lost to Jack Medley. Jo- lost to Latona, who are solid guys. But if you think someone's going to be seventh, eighth type of dude, yeah, not those kind of matches you lose. And then he comes out. He wins. ACCs, he dominates Jack Mueller, who everyone thinks is outstanding and knows is outstanding. So maybe the Camacho we were kind of we, we have to remember he was a freshman. It was his first time in the season. Yeah. Maybe maybe he was acclimating to the weight cut. 125 is easy for basically nobody. And maybe that was it partially. Maybe yeah. it was just a one up. Maybe it was a total well, outlier now, match. I, I too. Mean, Christian, lo- looking back, uh, so obviously Cardinal lost. He lost 6-5. That's his first match. But Medley and Schwarm, uh, so, okay, Medley's had a pretty damn good season, sh- and, and we didn't think he was going to be that good. Schwarm is the best pitter in the country, so it's not like he lost by decision to him. He got pinned, so, you know, he, maybe he wasn't aware quite at that point that he was so good. And then his his other loss is the McGarry one. I have no idea what happened there. But then Latona, he looked really good oh, at Scuffle, and I think he's legit. And, and Mueller's obviously legit, so... You have me kind of when you look at it through those lenses, maybe it's not that bad. Well, I wouldn't say it's that bad, but it's it's, uh, yeah, not, it's sure. not the results of someone that's going to finish in the top eight, right? And that's that's what yeah. we're discussing. I mean, Schwarm is yeah. maybe flirted with the top eight at times, but he did not have a good Big 12s. He tried to do your strategy, yeah. Ben. He lost in round <laughs> one. <laughs> then he got two pins in a row, but then he lost. I think he got pinned. He, he's kind of a oh, live by happens. the sword. Is he the best pinner in – the country are you really does having the most I, make you the best pinner it does not um because it feels like that but would when you look at his you make well when you look at his pin to decision ratio it's pretty outstanding i think it's like 18 pins in four decisions yeah. or something he's definitely something. the most pin reliant oh. yeah uh no it doesn't make you the best pinner. i mean he's definitely uh, if you made a finalist for the shallowest award um he's definitely in there though yeah for sure He's icing yeah. a lot of dudes. Okay. So Camacho gets it done. Huge win for him. Uh, you have to be feeling good about that. If you're an NC State fan, they ended up winning the whole thing. Uh, another interesting match was the bowling Heidley final, which we already talked about that a little bit, but it came down to a, a stall call, kind of a weird one where Heidley's kind of kicking out of a single and he kind of rolls and he goes out of bounds and gives up the, the deciding stall point. So Bolin wins there, and 184 just remains super, super duper wide open. Um, any other real standout results for you, Bracky? Uh, I mean, heck, I think we kind of mentioned it last week, but or yesterday, but Jake Wentzel, oh um, yeah, winning 165. That was surprising. I didn't see that coming after McFadden got a revenge on Bullard. I thought for sure he would win that. Um, I, I mentioned Bryce Jake Wentzel last week. You guys, you guys kind of scoffed at me. Kind of high scoring did, did match we? with O'Connor. We scoffed at both of Wenzel? you. Oh, you guys, you guys scoff. Rewind the tape. You guys scoffed at Jake Wenzel winning 165. I mentioned it. I didn't say it was a great possibility. I said it is a possibility. And you guys kind of. Guys, I yeah, can see myself scoffing at that. I, maybe I just imitated his scoff. I, my memory is starting to become a real uh, problem for me. So I don't remember, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. You know. Zach Sherman's really had a nice season mm-hmm. for, yeah, he has. for UNC. He has a, cu- a couple losses. He lost to Josh Heil, who's good. He lost to Tristan Moran, top seven guy. Tariq. Real Woods, and, right? And Noah Boffman's probably the one loss that stands out the, the most. But uh, Oh, yeah, and Real Woods. But I, yeah. he's pretty dang good. I think he's a definite All-American contender at 141. He's he's going to be a tough out. I really like him. Um, how he's been wrestling. Oh, Connor looks good. So it was a good, good overall tournament result. Nothing else too earth shattering that I saw at at the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament. Um, Mickey Phillippe gets it done over over Hernandez. So that was that. Do we want to talk more Big Twelves or EIWAs or where do we want to go? Uh, I think EIWAs would be good. That's uh, 
I, I watched a whole bunch of those matches. It was on flow, so obviously made it uh, made it a lot easier. We should re- start rejecting his flow pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I could make one under a pseudonym or something. Just to mess with him. Yes. So, EIWA, you know, Pat Glory, I think he cemented as the two seed now with, with Mueller losing. And now my question is, does Mueller go to the four? It would seem like he should based on yeah. Glory. Be, so. Glory has to be two. And I feel like Pitch mm-hmm. has had a better – his only loss is to Glory. Or if you compare a Glory loss to a um, Camacho loss. But one thing we have to remember is losses don't – don't matter. They don't Definitely. matter. And the it doesn't matter who you up. lose to. It makes no sense. And unless there's like a common opponent head to head, which I don't think Pitch or uh, Pitch and Mueller have any difference there. Unless did yeah, oh, Pitch might have beaten Camacho though. Did they wrestle this year? Uh, I'm looking. I don't see it right now. They both would have been at scuffle, but I don't know if they hit. Oh man. Yeah. That they they did not hit. So Pitch Pitch has got really good wins against. Uh, Pezzo, uh Latona, I don't know if you count that as a good win. Mackle, Swarm, Moody, oh. Mackle oh, yeah. again. That's I, He doesn't have that many really high-level wins either. No, he doesn't. He really doesn't. Wow. So if you're Spencer Crazy. Lee, who do you want in that semi? Do you want Mueller or do you want Pitch? It's tough, right? Yeah, it's, it's a toss. Yeah, so, I, I'd say a toss-up. There's only one guy that's beaten. Okay, I, yeah. I'd say probably pitch. You just beat him a few weeks ago. You feel pretty confident. Uh, I think that's probably who I would pick. Four and one against him. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it makes sense. That's who I. That's who I probably guess. So that's that. Um, okay, so EIW's glory gets it done. Not a. He's not like torching his way through it, but he gets his hand raised. Beats the Columbia kid. I think three one in that final. Who. Uh, the, the surprise was Kolioko going down in round one by pinfall to mm-hmm. Menino of Drexel. And then he dropped another one on the backside to not even qualify automatically. He had to get a – he went on, uh, one and two, I believe, thus to Dylan yeah. Ryder, which is a pretty, pretty rough result there. So tough one for, for Kolioko. I think we thought coming into this year he was another guy in that kind of Camacho conversation. And I don't know if it's weight or something else, but hasn't quite been as consistent as maybe we expected at 125 pounds. Yeah. Hey, do you guys think there's any chance come on, uh, Glory can give Spencer a go? You know, they, they haven't competed at all this year. Um, you know, last year, the first match was uglier than the second match. He did make a little bit of progress. I don't feel like Glory's made that much progress from last year to this year. I just I don't feel like it's gonna be all that competitive, but maybe I, maybe I'm wrong. Do you guys have that feeling at all? I think there are scenarios where Glory could have made it interesting in a duel off the hour weigh in in a in a tournament, but at NCAs, NCAA, and this would be the NCAA finals. Yeah, I say no yeah. way. And he's really good on top. He's he's uh, he could challenge Spencer there maybe, but I think the uh-huh. early goings. I don't I don't think he has enough offense, and I don't think he has the defense to keep. Spencer at bay. I think he is yeah. like a supremely confident wrestler and will really be gassed up and believe. But, um, and also he's got to get by pitch too, which I, I'm not ready yeah, to, I'm not ready to write that one in. I know he beat him in the duel, but that was a strange match. He he's certainly was the deserved winner, but I just don't see it materializing the way it did again. So, yeah. no, I um, mean, I think it's kind of a next topic situation now with Spencer. Fair enough. Uh, the other one at uh, 125 in the EIWA is with Brandon Pazzo got pinned first round. Yeah. Uh, and he came all the way back third. It was, uh, I, I watched the match. He was winning. I think you posted it, Kyle. He was winning um, and got like that, I don't know, splayed all situation that Seth Gross sets up from the, from the one inside leg in. Yeah. And then went straight to the splayed all. Did you ever hit splayed alls, Ben? Never did. I kind of thought they were a junk move. And <laughs> I like I like the way Seth and this guy, uh, I can't remember who did it to him. I like the way they do it from that leg in. It's kind of tricky. Uh, but I am nowhere near flexible enough to do that anymore. Well, yeah, not now. But not not now. You're a pretty flexible guy. That was a big thing. It, yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Tucker decisions his way through EIWAs. Uh, seven, That's what he does. Seven three eight two three one over Nick Farrow, but yeah, I guess that's just the thing. You get a takedown. If you can't get taken down, you're gonna be in a lot of matches. Yes. How many takedowns do you think he's given up this year? Hmm. Not a lot. No, I doubt very many at all. He's tough to score on. Um, we could probably give a guess here. Um, Cause how how tested was he at? CKLV, not very, right? He went yeah. 4 1, 5 3, 8 3, 6 3, 7 4. So that's like, sounds like no takedowns there. Yeah. Man, it may be under three or four takedowns. Dang. Guys are not scoring he... points on this guy. Nick Farrell was 6 4. Yeah. I don't know. I'll try to, I'll try to get that, pull that stat. 31 and 0. That's one thing wrestling really needs is like, more stats a repository of statistics but yes he's running through it 41 there's you know not much to talk about there 49 we've talked at length about kolodzik yeah joe dubuque tweeted yeah, at you. Did I you saw see that? I, yeah i saw it i don't know what he, he said i was right but you guys talked me out of it so then now i'm wrong i guess because you get you guys both talked me out of it yesterday i know that was a, that was kind of a crowning achievement i was very excited to have done that um yeah, to Joe Dubuque, I say, you know, he's like, reward the guy that wrestles for six minutes and 45 seconds. So I say, re no, reward the guy who's getting stalled against, to, no so, matter who that is at any point in time. Now, I'm, I'm, I might be like a, a long piece of grass in the wind now because to, he does have a point there. That is, and I did not watch the rest of the match. So it does really situational stalling when one guy's being aggressive. If you're going to call stalling aggressively, I'm totally cool with that. But if one guy's being aggressive for six and a half minutes and then it flips and the other guy's really aggressive just because um, he's losing, you can't call stalling way faster than he did earlier in the match. So if you want to call fast, that's cool with me, but call fast the whole time. I agree with that completely. It is a, a weird thing, the situational stalls. But we can't have the last 30 seconds you be able to run with impunity and stall in a way – See, the thing is, Kalazic stalled so much more egregiously than yeah. Prince Prince ever did, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. Just, Prince was never backing straight out of bounds and like completely evading action. So it's also the severity. It's why it's a very subjective and difficult call to make. Yeah. You know, one of the things, and this wouldn't solve the top bottom stalling, but one of the things that the the edge does in, in freestyle is like you never feel like someone should get called for stalling in, in freestyle because the edge like forces the action so hard right you know what i'm saying like if i push you and it, it just it forces you into this corner where you can't really evade somebody i feel like yeah that's why it's yeah. such a good rule we talked about um humphrey 7-0 over monday good reversal yep. there from the duel Humphrey's looking good. Humphrey's of West Virginia. Yep. Stand up. He went to four high schools. That's okay. <laughs> really? All right. Yes. Really. We got oh two qualifiers God. in the field. Two qual Noah and, and Josh. Yep. Two good qualifiers. Yeah. Wait till Braxton gets in the mix. I know. Nice. It's coming in uh, Peyton Hall's a top five kid. That's going to be problems. John Martin Best. Wow. We're coming. <laughs> you didn't get Pretty soon, Ben's going to have an AWA in our. Parker's West Virginia. AWA <laughs> Parkersburg. Go. That'd be great. Schedule yeah, do. does it. Uh, schedule's really tough. He d he does not score many points. But no. what he does do is get his hand raised pretty frequently. And he gave <laughs> he gave Shane Griffith a really tough match at the Southern Scuffle. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys remember that match or not. It came down to like it came down to one of those stall two stall calls in like ten seconds when he gave up a regular stalling call and then backed out of bounds like five seconds later so he gave up a point and that was ultimately the difference so that's why i'm i like shane griffith but i'm wondering if, if he's gonna be in a match like that in round two he's gonna have a schedule type of dude early on he's got to be able to, to score points which we know he can but that's that um nothing major at 74 and 84 i mean i mean with 74 cutlers just far and away the, the best guy at this weight. He was unchallenged. <laughs> what? You, you guys have a great article up. I'm uh, sorry. I, 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 the, you guys heat map. I, I, I looked it up because of Bracky's West Virginia comments a couple seconds ago. 
And I can't I can't comment that much because Wisconsin's not all that strong yet. It looks like we have three either three or four based on the heat map. But it's really funny because West Virginia, you have like this ring around it because you have Ohio whole bunch, Pennsylvania a whole bunch, and then it looks like Northern Virginia slash Jersey a whole bunch, and then West Virginia is just sitting like right here. And you know, you you have the two from West Virginia, it appears. Yeah. Look at Virginia, baby. That looks pretty nice. Although Virginia's I don't know. Got a lot. Where's Floyd County? Where's uh I don't know if they appropriately placed uh Hunter Bolins. I don't even think they put one in Christiansburg. Where they are probably these? did it. Yeah, I was gonna say they probably did it by high school. Well, I don't that's not where Chris, none of this is where Christiansburg is either. But okay, close enough. Close um, enough. I just want the proper a lot of you know, it's a couple of Texans. Got Skalardzik, Austin, Texas, baby. Yeah, he's the and who Dallas, else for South got, Point? Who's the Dallas? Who says three or four? Mueller Jack Mueller is one. Yep. I don't okay. know who else. Any more Allen kids? Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of fun. All right. Sorry. Yeah. This, he, the heat, I love the heat maps. And Look at when Bracky brought up West Virginia, I had to, I had to search if you guys did it. You guys had already done it. Yeah, it makes me sad. We're we're gonna turn it up on Wisconsin. G- give me like two or three more years, and we'll, we'll have some a bunch of dots up there. Yeah, East Coast, uh, East Coast. Yeah crushing it the other thing well the other th- thing that is unfair is how many division one colleges you guys have out there on the east coast oh, it's, it, uh, it's not you so guys unfair. they it's so unfair i wish oh. we had that many in wisconsin it would be oh, fantastic it's, and it's, it's so unfair like how it's these wait these are these qualifiers are where their hometown it's not where their schools i well but you're more likely to go to a school close to you obviously christian come on i guess i mean it's not fair virginia case sticks in point, in wrestling, case in point ben Askren. 61 and then you got D sixty ones. How did Virginia got sixty ones? We don't stink at wrestling. We're like, we don't stink at. Who's Wisconsin's best wrestler right now? Best high school or not best high school? Best kid in D one right now. Best, got, yeah. Cole Martin. Cole we got Martin, Hunter, Stephen Buchanan, or Peyton Mako. I think those are only three qualifiers. All right. Well, we got Hunter Bolin. He'll he'll go Congo Deathmatch for all those guys. So. <laughs> also, I love. That. So we have a breakdown of how many each state has, <laughs> and then like in the middle Where? of the states, it just says Finland <laughs> we for got, the Hino. We have a Belarus. Who's Belarus? Oh, who's, um, who's Belarus? Slavikuski. Oh, y'all, y'all Slav oh. the Harvard heavyweight. <laughs> I should have probably guessed that. And then out, of course, your wrestling hop at Alabama for oh. Brandon Womack. Connecticut, you know, we know who that is, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Camacho. Camacho. Danbury. Yeah, yeah. Mhm. Danbury stand up. I love that he put a heat map. Oh, he put that in there. The heat map has the <laughs> has Europe in there. You got to check out this heat map article. It's great. Um Yeah, Virginia with 10. Hot dang. Yeah. Big hater. That's I a like top this, one too. The second heat map you guys have, you scroll down the article where they have the the red spots. I like that one too. Um That is so you see like that uh, that the the hottest the hottest spot is that uh, Nazareth, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, New York City, that type of area right there is is so good at wrestling. Yeah, it's insane. It'd be so awesome. Mm-hmm. It would be cool to live in a place like that where there's that many clubs and it's that important. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did we do EIWAs? Was there anything else? We, we were on one eighty four. I I, got, I pulled up the heat maps. I apologize. That's okay. We mentioned we mentioned Brucky falling to Phipps, and then the Darmy Army is storming. Uh, it's going to be problems come Minneapolis. I'm excited to watch him. I can't. He's one. Where do you seed this guy? He That's could be true. really yeah. difficult to seed. What number one? <laughs> he should be the one seed. Uh, no one has done what he's done this year. That is factually uh. correct. Ah, uh, man, you know what we need so bad? You're right, Colin Moore and Noah Adams haven't lost to Brandon Whitman. It's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no one has done what Darmstadt has done this year. You know what we need this so bad is a Darmstadt-Noah Adams match, Ben. How big would that be? Oh, yeah, be? that'll be wild. That would be well, wild. I, I, Someone is getting pinned. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're Colin Moore, you are hoping he ends up at the three. I mean – He's a guy who you got to favor Colin Moore over everybody, but you think who's your toughest matchups? Ben Darmstadt has a pain in his butt. We'll edit and this out. And I think out. Colin Moore wins. We'll edit this yeah. out, but um, 
I think Colin Moore absolutely destroys Ben Darmstadt. I think it is the but, worst. I think it's the worst matchup of anyone in the field. I think no way. I think really? No, no way. I'm saying it. Yeah, uh, okay, like, who's the other guys? Who are these other guys that are ranked high at 97? Noah's who's number like, two. Brocky, okay, so, t- so three, four, five. Who's three, four, five, six? Hold on. Let me pull it here. Because obviously Darmstadt's Moore, one of those. by the way, was seven to four in favor of Colin Moore and then 2018 NCAA championship Concy semis. Hmm. That's not as bad as I thought it'd be. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if Darmstadt's is good this year. He has not been as good. Jay Aiello, Eric Schultz, Jacob Warner. Those are the. So would you rather wrestle? Would you rather wrestle the ALO winner? ALO uh, Schultz winner, or would you rather wrestle Ben Darmstadt? I think Ben Darmstadt poses more unique problems. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he has just a lot of tricks. He he's got a lot of big moves. I feel like ALO and Schultz, it's like they they might wrestle you tougher. I think there's a higher probability of a close match, but there's probably a lower probability of them hitting a big move to beat you. And that's really, when you look at the only way Colin Moore is going to lose right now, probably only going to be a big move. Has Eric Schultz given him some uh, more some runs? Is that, am I remembering yeah, correctly? Yeah, no. They, um, uh, CKLV was, a few years ago was a one-point match, and then uh, last year in the duel went to sudden victory. Yeah. Oh. But – this year he's kind of controlled him twice. Yes. Okay. So that's of note. So yeah, Darmstadt is a real seeding wrinkle. We'll find. I can't believe we get to find out today. National holiday. Okay. And then heavyweight. Uh, doubt there's much to talk about there. Although you gotta watch this. Uh, uh, Zachary Knight and Ward from Hofstra. Yep. This dude yep. is like. Have you watched him, Ben? I yeah. I know who he is. Oh my gosh! I've never really. I'm, I'll He's be honest. He's a freight train. He is a freight train. He just double eggs the crap out of guys. <laughs> I I I want to see this guy um, go on a run. He would be so random, and he does lose uh, his fair share of matches. But you line up guys, you don't. He he could be an interesting wrinkle in this in this weight class. And, you know, Hofstra, say what you want, but they've been able to do well with heavyweights. You know, they had the guy a couple of years ago. Who was yep. that guy? The world's Mike, biggest Mike person? Hughes. Mike Hughes. Mike, <laughs> Mike Hughes. Biggest person world's twice. biggest person, Mike Hughes. <laughs> he was so big. He was cutting weight. Uh, he cut. Him and Adam Kuhn were at, came down to the final for world's biggest person. He beat a lot of oh guys. He beat God. Derek White that year. Yeah, he was so much well, bigger than him. <laughs> he was so much bigger. Amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Enjoy yeah, I, I I feel like we should do the questions for friends because I feel like tomorrow all the only thing we're gonna be talking about is the brackets. Okay, we can. It's do just it. gonna be brackets the whole time. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it right now. Um, we didn't get to do them. Last- Some guy was like, "What are you gonna do with yesterday's questions?" Since you did all you did was <laughs> recap the Big Ten. So I was like, "Gosh, I'm sorry. Sorry, we didn't get the <laughs> questions. Sometimes it's it's not possible." Okay, this is a this is a totally insane hypothetical, but. I'm going to ask it because I'm wearing a shirt from The Wire, and this is called Jimmy McNulty's Bar Tab. And so that gets your, <laughs> that gets your question asked. Uh, if Pat Glory beats Spencer Lee in the finals, and then Noah Adams pins Colin Moore, I don't know why pinning matters, but who, who's for the Hodge? Well, well yeah. Oh. There's yeah, no Adams be undefeated. win the Hodge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I see what he's saying now. He wants me to say I'm going to vote for Noah Adams yes, for the Hodge do Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, will you consolidate our votes and vote for Noah Adams? Because oh. who's it coming down to at that point? Well, what if what if Chaz Tucker stays undefeated? No. Or, uh, yeah, no. what if he does? If Chaz Tucker stays undefeated, he's winning the Hodge. No way. He has yeah. he has like he can't. No way. Okay, he's not Nick a pinner. Lee, Nick Noah Lee Adams and, is a daggone pinner. Let's Nick, see, Nick. Okay, I'm trying to see who else is undefeated. Besides, Forty-one's uh, Gable, out. Gable. Forty-one's out. Thirty-three's 49. out. No, Chaz Tucker might win. No. Stop Maybe. it. <laughs> Get it out of your mind. 49 is out. 57, 57. Deacon. Well, De- Deacon's been really dominant. It could Six, be Deacon. 65 is out. 74 is out. 84 is out. Um, Gable's, so, Gable's still in. Gable, I could I could consider voting for Gable. His bonus is very high as well. He does bonus. He's not challenged at all. I don't yeah. know, man. I may throw I may throw Adams. If he pins <laughs> Colin Moore. I'm pulling up Noah Adams' wrestle stat right now. 
Bonus? He's only got a 40% bonus. Come on. I thought he pinned more than that. Recrunch yeah, I mean, the numbers, ben. ben, recrunch the numbers. One, two, Need another three, crunch. Four, five. Five pins. Five pins. That's not a lot. Yeah, but if he gets, if good. he pins everyone at NCAAs, he would have double digit pins. No, <laughs> I, it would be hard for me to vote for Adams with that information. I would think probably Gable. Yeah. Even though it's hard when a yeah. guy's been missed half the season. Missed, missed half the Deacon's, season. Deacon's Deacon's pretty good. Deacon's got good stats. I'm gonna let him look him up. Someone was like, "Are we really gonna live in a world where Colin Moore has a Hodge and Jason Nolf doesn't?" I was like. <laughs> it is hi it is jason nope not get a hodge that's disaster look at he was not the best any year he wrestled i know i know it's unfortunate yeah, so good, ed ruth never won the hodge oh that's that's depressing also um we live in a world 62. where vince young doesn't have a heisman trophy so yeah that is sad <laughs> Vin, uh deacon's, so deacon's got six <laughs> deacon's got 62 percent Hey, news! Hey, uh, Sam Herring schooling us here. We forgot Shane Griffith is undefeated at one sixty. He got no bonus. He's got no. Bonus. You you floated yeah. Chaz Tucker. What are you talking about, dog? You can't float Who's Chaz Tucker. Bonus? I'm looking Shane it up Griffith. right now. Are right, you look Who up? You look up? Shane. I I'll got him up Chaz. All oh, right, sixty okay. percent for Shane Griffith. Oh no! Way. Oh wow! Nine percent. Nine percent. Oh nine percent. Oh my Chaz. gosh! Chaz, Chaz is gonna turn it up and get double digits. Oh my gosh! One major. Many... He has one fall, one pinfall, one pinfall against who? Oh, it man. was against me. Tommy Maddox, Buffalo. Tommy Maddox. Two he... falls. Brent Jones, <sighs> you have been pinned. Oh man, that's it. Okay, wow. so, so that's a pretty low rate of bonus. Thank you, Sam. Oh uh, my gosh, he literally only has one major. One major. Wow. Right, that's okay. He probably has two majors at Cornell, knowing him. He's like a smart guy. Hey -o. Boom. All right. <laughs> so that was that was the question. Thank you, Jimmy McNulty's bar tab. That was, a, that was a good question. He almost got me to vote for Noah Adams for Hodge, hypothetically. Almost. Nice try, Jimmy. Okay. That was good. Now, I, I'll i ask this question, but I want to – it's going to be way more fun tomorrow. But who's everyone's dark horse to go on a run and make the finals? Dark horses always have to be crazy. Crazy. Zany. I think this is wild. I said it for Big Tens. I'll just keep going with it. Yaya Thomas. What? Stop. Dark horse. It's got to be off the – What? who are you going to say? Chaz what's Tucker? He gonna be, what's he going to be right? <laughs> He's going to be – Chaz Tucker going to be the number one seed. <sighs> yeah, he'll be your dark horse. But I don't know why he's going to be seated. He might be like 22 or something. He was oh he God. was a, a whisker away from beating Sasso. Yeah. Did you're you watch right. that match? Hey, um, hey, someone's schooling us on the on the flow on the Facebook comments. If Glory pins uh, Spencer Lee, he's undefeated and he'll have a plus seventy percent bonus rate. So that's all he has to do. He just needs to pin pitch and uh, Spencer, and then yeah, I'll vote for Pat Glory for Hodge. Okay. I think deal. Gable's undefeated uh, too. And his bonus is seventy three percent, which is higher ooh, than Oh my goal. goodness. But okay. fewer matches. Who fewer is... matches, but not by much. Fifteen fifteen oh is not bad. Damn, who's my dark horse? Brecky, who's your dark horse? I mean I went I went super, super off the radar. Um make the finals. Yeah, I'm gonna go the Who's the most random finalist of the last like ten years? finalist the problem is once they get to be a finalist you don't feel like they're random anymore but i would zeke say moisey that one zeke moisey that was, was, so, oh, that was random. so random and he so beat, random he beat nishan eddie clamara and gilman he beat yeah. two world teamers and in the first round he beat like chase and tolbert yeah who he hadn't beaten that year yeah he was just on fire yeah. he, was, was, he was the last one. unseated guy on now there's literally no such thing as an unseated guy but he was the first unseated yeah. guy to make the finals in a long time. Uh, Josh yes. Josh Kindig was pretty random when it happened. Kindig was random. Yep. I'll say, um, man. So this, how, is who, this is a tough one. We'll I'm gonna go with. Tomorrow. Okay, go are, you know, yeah, I feel like it'd be better once random? we get the brackets. Okay, I was just gonna pick. I was gonna pick Shaq. Okay. See that to me he's is not. Like a, yeah, that's. But he's a, gonna be like a 15. Yeah, that's dark horse if he does it. If he does it, yeah. that would be. Um, hmm. 
I'm trying to think if there's any others. I I just I just think 149. I think it's going to be a 49 or 84 is going to have someone totally cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Um, what if yeah, Rocky Jordan? Could... Rocky Jordan probably. Nah, he's having a rough go. Yeah, that's the whole point. They have rough goes. Kyle Cannell needs a, a a wild card, and he gets third, and he pins. That's true. Over. It true. is true. It has happened. Okay, next question. Um, someone asked someone if like NCAA's got canceled, like would everyone get a red shirt? I don't know. Certainly, there's. Uh, no- last week we didn't get to it. Tim Amos asked a really good question about Olympic red shirts. What happens if the Olympics get like pushed back? Yeah, what if the Olympics are in 2021 or something crazy? Let me pull this tweet from Tim because he worded it really well. And well, we're going to – yeah, I'm picking Peyton Mako to the finals. Of, <laughs> of what? <laughs> Dark horse, baby. Maybe, like, to take finals? Like, I, oh my goodness. I could get with that. All right, Tim Amos. Bullies. Japan is saying that contractually the 2020 Summer Games can be held any time before – uh, December 31st, 2020. If the games are pushed to November slash December, how does this affect student athletes who use an Olympic red shirt this 1920 academic year? Will NCAA allow an additional semester Olympic red shirt? I think they should under this circumstance. And I think the way well, you, this- but hold on, Christian, you'd have the team picked already. So you'd know who it's going to be, right? Oh, that's a good point. Unless trials yeah. get pushed back. Yeah, we would know the team. That's so right. unless you were – okay, hypothetically, kid if Dayton makes the team, Yanni, then you would say or... Dayton, Yanni, one of those t- – Spencer, Yeah. then maybe. Oh, we wait, but, guess it's not but Spencer's not even taking a, uh, yeah. Olympic. So, yeah. I don't know. I think they should if that happens. Okay, okay. How close is Nebraska – this is from Andrew Jensen. How close is Nebraska to being a top-tier team? How many years out do you think they are from being an NCAA title threat? Well, this I don't a, know. This is a good question. Well, NCAA title threat, I think they're a long ways from that. But a top-tier program, I think they maybe are that right now. They there, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just second at Big Tens ahead of Nebraska – or ahead of Ohio State and Penn State. They qualified all yeah. 10 guys automatically. Yeah. Didn't need wild cards. No wild yeah. cards. Yeah. So I think – Yeah, so I will – I think where I was going to go with that, Christian, is that they, they've been a top-tier program, but it's like – for whatever reason, they have they haven't been able to break through to that. Like they've never been ranked number one. They've never you know finished say top two at NCAs, um, and they've been good. And they it feels like they've been the bridesmaid on so many big time recruits. And they've gotten like really good recruits, but not like the blue chippers. And so well, it feels like it's, yeah. could they break through? Can they? I I really think what they've lacked is the high end firepower. The, the story mm-hmm. for me for Nebraska has always been complete team, top to bottom, really good wrestlers, but they just have not had – I mean, they, of course they had Jordan, and they had James Green, and Jordan was a, a, a multiple champ and won the Hodge Trophy. But beyond that, they haven't had the, the guys that are making the finals. You know, they had Kokesh comes to mind. Craig Brester comes to mind. But you need, a, you yeah. need several yeah. of those guys in Congress working together. And right now, yeah. I don't know. You know, they had Berger last year made the finals, but they you need to to make a trophy push. You need multiple of those guys, and I think they have another. They're similar. I view them similarly this year, like Lovett and Red and Purinton and Peyton Robb and Isaiah White. All these guys, Taylor Vins, they're all really good. But Eric Schultz, but they're all. I think many of them are going to wrestle in like. The round of 12 and wrestling the console, consolation. I just don't see – I don't know if I see an NCAA finalist. But, I mean, they didn't have a big okay. game finalist. They did. Well, let, me, let me ask you yeah. this one, Christian. So, so next year, um, they don't graduate almost anyone. Next year, when you're looking at the field, could could Chad Red push to be an NCAA finalist? Could Mikey Labriola? Could yeah. Eric Schultz? I mean, I think a bunch of those guys would be ranked top two right off the bat, right? Maybe they will, but I haven't seen – you know, Chad Red could be a finalist this year, very, very possibly. Sure. But I haven't seen the uh, the arc with Labriola that says like yeah. he's made a jump from freshman to sophomore. Right. I think sure. he's kind of a he's a he's really good. He's really tough. But I don't know if he's going to enter that title contending realm Ooh. next year. Now you lose. Oh, oh. What? Everybody. I just I just brought up the ring. You lose 
Paul Kemmer, Color Lighty, Steyer Skatska. Oh, I think Kemmer will be back, yeah. I think he'll be back, and I, you throw Staraki in there. Uh, yeah, you're sure. right. No, he could be. He's probably he's already done well. Yeah, he could be a top four guy. Maybe he makes the finals. That's that's very possible. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Here's what changes next year for for Nebraska. The every team is way better next year. Penn State is sure. going to be better yeah. next year. They're going to throw in, or at least I think. You so. think? Well, yeah. They're going. I think Kirk Fleet's a title contender, right? They're going to add yeah. him. I think at 197, I think Beard should be an upgrade. Right, I think Staraki is not a Staraki is not a huge downgrade at 174. Obviously, you would rather have Mark Hall, but man, I think Staraki is yeah. going to be special. Now, 65, you're not. There's, there's no Chenzos yeah. coming through. That's going to be problematic. So maybe they won't be. You you assume Bergie's going to be healthy. We'll see what Joe yeah. Lee can become. Um, Roman's another Cor year better. Cor Nickley, yeah. Corn Cornell and Michigan are the obvious ones that have huge upgrades next year. Cornell and Michigan absolutely are going to be title contenders. Those teams are going to be yeah. filthy next year. If you look at, I mean, Michigan's going to go be all in next year. They're going to be really, really good with uh, the lineup they're going to be pulling out. So I think it gets tougher, and I think what those teams have that I don't know if Nebraska will or won't have is that real high-end title contending at like yeah. five weights, which you might need. Like, yeah. Michigan's going to have – Title contender with Michich, Amin, uh, maybe Massa at 74. We talk about 74 with Massa. Yeah, He'll be in the mix there. Um, Mason Paris. I feel like I'm Mason missing Paris. a big guy for. for uh, I mean, Lu Luan will be good. And you have it also have not mentioned Joey Silva. And my, yes, I was saving the best for last, Ben. The little Amin, Cam Amin. I said Cam, okay. yep. I don't know if Cam he'll be a top. Be I don't think he's a top four guy as a freshman, yeah. but. You know, no, right. Kanan Stores good. Kanan Stores good in there right now. Kanan's good. Kanan is good. So they're gonna be really good. And you think, yeah. all right, Cornell's title contenders. Vito's back. Yanni's back. Max Dean's back. The goat Ben Darmstadt's back. So there's four right off the bat. Do they wrestle Josh yep. Saunders? Do they wrestle? Um, you know, how good is the Foca, Julian Ramirez, Luis Fernandez classic Fernandez. guys? That's mm -hmm. gonna be a really, really good team. And then there's Iowa, who is just. They lose yep. Lugo, probably only Lugo. We think Kemmer is going to be back, and then you insert Jaden Ironman somewhere in there. Maybe Miran goes up. Maybe Ironman goes up. I don't think Ironman wants to go up, but regardless, that's a really good team. So yeah. Nebraska is really going to have to – who do they have waiting in the wings there? Do they, they have Kevon Davenport? Who I think Kevon, pretty good. That's probably at 49. And then I don't know who – they have someone good filling in 65. I'm playing on who it is right now. Really? Uh, I, I believe so. Not not as good as Isaiah White, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go do research when you guys ask the next question. No, he's looking it up. Okay, so Nebraska. Oh, okay. All respect to Nebraska. It it'll be tough for them. Okay. Oh, Bailey Brown at Dan's Brita filter. Can we have a segment where we turn off Ben's mic for like ten minutes and he just retorts with some <laughs> funny answers while CP and KB have no idea what he is saying? We sort of did this yesterday. It sounds like it may have been a hit, Ben. What were you even talking about during that that period I did, of time? I little didn't even say anything. I was just like I kept logging off and logging back on to try to get to work and saying, you know, hello, hello, could you guys hear me? I wasn't saying anything. But yeah, that would be pretty funny if I was just like talking trash while you guys didn't know what I was saying. That would be Well, hilarious. the one time we did just let you talk and then we pretended to agree with you. Yeah, you made uh, a fantastic point. What was it? What were you talking about? That I was I, what I got on the on, I was about Spencer Lee. So that's what, you know, I, I said my piece when I when I actually got my mic turned oh, on. Oh, okay, got on. Yeah. Someone, uh, Power Tie wants. He said, "Could you invite a D1 referee to be an FRL guest? Interesting to get their perspective on stall calls and more." Yeah, we thought about. I thought about doing that this year. We didn't. Uh, I'm not opposed to having a, an official on. Um, I may not. It may not be the most fun thing for them. I mean, basically. Yeah. It will. They will have to either get confronted heavily or throw some of their fellow officials under the bus with some of these. Because I would just run all these ridiculous yeah. stall calls and make. All right, explain this. How I'm supposed to rationalize this as a fan? And this is this is coming from my perspective and elite coaches' perspective. Can you imagine being like a fan? I'm kind of trying to learn this thing and understand, and then all of a sudden a guy backs completely out of bounds and 
the other guy gets hit for stalling, like the, the confusion that it creates. Whereas if I could just tell a new fan, if you, oh, if you step out of bounds, you get warned for something called stalling. That could just com could compute so much easier. So they would have a hard time. Well, I'm not opposed to it, but I don't know why they would want to do it either. Yeah, I the, well, the one that would be interesting to me is not not a referee, but the the lead of the rules committee or whatever you want to call it. You know what we could have on is is Mike Haggerty. He's like an official, yeah, like reviewer guy, and he could kind of like speak on behalf of the the movement. Okay, someone asked if if Camacho pulled the biggest upset of the weekend. To which I think we said uniformly yeah. yes that he did do I that. So. Um. What are your thoughts on DeSanto going into NCAAs? Does he have a shot at the title? Also, what about him getting a team point deducted and no one else penalized for doing the same blatant action as he did? Well, I don't know what he means there. He said bad words to the ref. That's yeah, I didn't see anybody else say bad words. To did the you ref. hear which bad refs? Did you hear bad, which bad words? I didn't hear the words, but the words okay. were told to Tom Brands, and Tom Brands seemed alarmed with the words, which if he's alarmed, I'm alarmed. He made DeSanto apologize to the official. Yes. Did he really? Oh yeah, dude, I thought I told. Did I not tell the story well, on radio? No. no. Uh -huh. Okay, I so not. All right, so here's what happened. Um, they get up. Seth Seth wins, and as soon as he raises the hand, the ref walks over to Coach Brands. I think he takes the team point. And then he walks over to Coach Brands. He's like, "Hey, I took a team point or something like this." He said, "This." And Coach Brands, I, he like the ref like kind of whispered in his ear. And Coach Brands goes to who? And he says to me. And then he's like, <laughs> he gets to to DeSanto. I guess also it's DeSanto apparently. I mean that's always Not what DeSanto. Tom called him, but I think it's DeSanto. I didn't know if it was one of those things like where yeah, he's dresser kind of always care, called Jared Hot how. <laughs> I don't know if it was one of those things. Yeah, it could be that, but I think it actually is DeSanto. But regardless, he like. He like makes him go apologize. Hey, you, you go and apologize like a man. And DeSanto shakes the guy's hand and says he's sorry. And the ref kind of like gives him some words of advice and they move on. Um, but not before it costs him a team point, man. It's coaching DeSanto has to be a wild ride. That I think you <laughs> I think you sign up for it and you take it every day. But it has to age you some. That as good as he <laughs> wants to do and is well behaved as he may want to be i think there's just still some part of him that is impulse control is really difficult and he just yeah. says what's on his mind and i can't remember who i was i, I was talking to an iowa guy and they said the santo is great in the room like leader everyone likes him no zero issues whatsoever he's not a circus act according to tom brands i think i think they the who team did we talk about this on radio we talked about it um one day when you were out okay yeah not a circus act. So they don't want – Yeah, but no – They gas him up a little bit. But someone I was talking to, you know, I said, is he an issue in the room or, you know, because sometimes um, you is might when think you found that out he, Jacob he would... Warner talks to girls? <laughs> I don't – no, he, he – yeah, that, that was so funny. Oh, my God, I was dying laughing. <laughs> uh, no, I don't remember who it was told me. I wasn't Gilman because obviously I asked Gilman. The, the most interesting about the Gilman interview, um, Christian, you'll like this. I asked him about him and Spencer because the one interview, whoever was interviewing, it was promotional malpractice. He literally says about Spencer Lee, um, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So I said, listen, I don't know why they didn't follow up, but do you consider Spencer an enemy? And, and then, you know, he kind of said, he kind of said, no, whatever, whatever. And I said, well, when's the, when's the last time you guys worked out or how often do you work out? And he said, I can't remember the last time I wrestled with Spencer Lee. I exactly. thought that was wild. I thought that was wild. I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Um, well, I think he be – well, who's his enemy then? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Who's closer than him? Yeah, I don't know. I, I figure that's what he meant by that. But he, sa he said that – he said Spencer's not his enemy, but he – I, I man, I'm forgetting the exact words. You'll have to go watch the interview. Um, but he did, then he does say, we have not wrestled. I cannot remember the last time we wrestled. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. Does but he go a lot with DeSanto? He said a little bit with DeSanto, um, but he kind of just said just who's ever there. He didn't really name a specific person that was kind of his main go-to person. Weird. I don't know why. Yeah. They, you, you would think the whole thing is we have all these awesome lightweights, so they train together and make each other better. But he doesn't wrestle yeah. with Spencer. Spencer doesn't wrestle with him. Um, yeah. 
Iron can only sharpen iron. I guess the proximity could help, but it would seem like the iron sharpen iron thing is a thing if you were wrestling with each other. Yeah, you'd think. Okay. Well, that's that's interesting. All right. Uh, yeah. Those are any other questions I missed that uh, you guys are excited to ask. Oh, uh, dark horses. Nebraska, DeSanto. I think we did it. No, I think. Uh, I yeah, I think you know, I think it would be fu- not fun, but I think it'd be informative to have uh, some type of ref, not a referee, but someone who's in charge of making the rules and stuff. Um, yeah, I think that'd be get, good. Yeah, they got the. Um, yeah. Okay. Why don't we go? Let's do it. We'll call it okay. a day, but not really because we're back five central. In Today. CAA, I'll be teaching really the Girl Scouts how to wrestle, baby. Oh my gosh, you're gonna show little Shirley a sweep single <laughs> while we f- see where Jack Mueller's seated. Can you imagine? Oh, ben Askren, oh, this man. is the life you've got. That's what you get. No good deed goes unpunished, Benjamin. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. But you know All what? Right. You can check out the archive. I'll even send you the link because you're a big guy of. You know what? You're a very assertive person, but when you want something online, you just expect someone to. Do the process that you would have to go through and give you the link. You're like, where's the NCAA bracket? You guys know everything. You guys are geniuses. (laughs) That's very nice of you to say. But I think you're just saying that so that we continue to supply you with links to wrestling feeds. Well, he keeps getting rejected. (laughs) Now you're getting rejected. On ESPN Plus, they reject me so hard. (laughs) All right. Well, someone give Ben Askren an ACC Network login so you can watch these ACC finals before NCAAs. Thank you guys for listening. NCAA Bracket Show, 5 Central, 6 Eastern. You do the math. See you then. Thanks so much. Peace.